celebrate the Nativity of our Lord. We ask all those with cell phones to please turn them off or put them on silent mode at this time. Just a reminder that due to COVID, we will not be passing the collection basket. Please use the donation baskets at the exits. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Davy. Our opening hymn will be, O Come, O Come, All Ye Faithful. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we prepare now to celebrate this blessed liturgy, we pause once again, acknowledging our sinfulness, but trusting always in God's mercy. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and to, to my, my brothers and sisters, sisters that I have grievously sinned sin. in my, my thoughts, in, in my words, in what, what I have done, and what, what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the Father, you take away the sin. 
sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen, amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Let us pray. O oh God, who gladden us year by year as we wait in hope for our redemption, grant that just as we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer, we may also merit to face him confidently when he comes again as our Judge, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name, pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. As a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. Forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Blessed the people who know the joyful shout. In the light of your countenance, O Lord, they walk. At your name they rejoice all the day. And through your justice they are exalted. Forever I will sing the goodness of the he shall say of me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. 
forever I will maintain my kindness toward him, and my covenant with him stands firm. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The second reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul reached Antioch in Pisidia and entered the synagogue, he stood up motioned with his hand and said, Fellow Israelites and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of his pe this people Israel chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out of it. Then he removed Saul and raised up David as king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, what do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of the earth will be destroyed. The Savior of the world will reign over us. Hallelujah. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ became, came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There is a cute little legend about the shepherds hearing the message of the angels proclaiming Jesus' birth. As the legend goes on to say, as the angels heard the message, as the shepherds heard the message from the angels, they went off in haste, as we all know the scriptures say. As they went off in haste, each one took a gift to give to this newborn babe. 
Some took some of their fruits of their labor. Some took bread. One shepherd took a lamb. And they went off on their journey in search for this newborn babe in Bethlehem. Along with them was a little shepherd boy. And he didn't have anything to give. He didn't have any gift to give this newborn king. And he was a little embarrassed because of that. I have nothing to offer him. And so they went to the stable, and there they found Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. And as Mary was holding the child, each of the shepherds were giving their gifts to Joseph and to Mary. Well, because the little shepherd boy had nothing to offer, he sort of scooted behind one of the taller shepherds as he watched the others give their gifts. Well, as it happened, Joseph's arms were full of gifts, and Mary was trying to hold the baby Jesus and the gifts at the same time, and she found that very difficult to do. And so she spies the little shepherd boy sort of hiding. She calls him forth. She says, here, I want you to hold the baby Jesus. And it was at that time, for the very first time in his life, that the shepherd felt so much intense love, the little boy. So much warmth that he overcame his embarrassment that at the moment that he approached God with empty hands and nothing else, the Lord filled his hands and his heart and his life with the light of God, the love of God. And he overcame his such embarrassment that he was holding the baby Jesus and showing him to everybody who came to the stable so happy and joyful he was because he at that time now was holding the king of love. Of course it's a legend. I bet some of you thought I was going to say he played his drum. <laughs> Fooled you, didn't I? But it was the very first time that he felt that he, the shepherd boy, was worth something. And the moral of the story is, it is even when we come to the Lord with empty hands and a broken heart at times, his love fills us totally and completely. We don't have to bring him gifts. He gives us the gift of himself. And isn't that the summary of what Christmas is? Isn't that, in a nutshell, that parable, that story, to be told as the meaning of Christmas, that God so came into the world, in a world with empty hands, in a world with broken hearts, in a world that was living in darkness, in a world that many times people don't think highly of themselves because of their sinfulness of the past or because of their sinfulness of the present. That he was born into this broken world to bring us one message, the message of the Father's infinite love for each one of us. A love that does not have to be earned. A love that does not have to be merited. A love that is completely and freely given out of God's generous and abundant concern and mercy for each one of us. That was the message that Jesus himself as an adult in his ministry came to bring. 
to lift people out of their brokenness, to lift people out of their darkness, to lift people out of their feeling of unworthiness, and to instill in them that, hey, you are worth it. You are loved by God. You are cherished by Him. Because I came to tell you that. You see, in our spiritual life so often, we believe that we have to be perfect before we come to God. That we have to be holy and sinless before God will listen to us. That we have to toe the line and dot every I and cross every T before God will even have time for us. We were brought up that way, probably, that we had to earn his love. Well, unfortunately, for some who believe that, their spiritual life is stunted. The spiritual life is stunted. Because the basis of all our spiritual life is what we're celebrating tonight. The love of God freely coming into the world to let us know that we are cherished and wanted by a loving Father. I wonder how many of us in this church tonight might be feeling a little bit of empty-handedness. I wonder as we look at our life, we see that, you know, we really don't at times measure up. We look at our life and we see that, yes, we are sinners, that we are struggling, that our hearts are broken at times, and that we struggle and muddle through this life. And sometimes we put that on God and say, well, then God can't. He doesn't have time for me. I hope that this Christmas celebration will reaffirm what that little shepherd boy learned that as he carried the child in his empty hands and he felt that immense love that you and I tonight will feel that same love. Doesn't matter what your past has been. It doesn't matter how long you might have been away from church. It doesn't matter how terrible we think we are. God's love is there. His love is constant. His love will never leave us. I pray that that Christmas message rings in our hearts tonight. That we, like that shepherd boy, will go to our blessed Lord with empty hands and an open heart and truly be ready to receive the greatest gift that the Father could ever have given us, his love present in his Son. Open your hands, open your hearts, and receive the greatest gift that could ever have been imagined. And now let us stand and profess our faith in our wonderful God as we say with one voice, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. 
he suffered death and was buried and rose again on a third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Reminded of God's steadfast love and fidelity revealed through this newborn child, we bring our prayers before the Lord. For our Holy, for our Holy Father, bishops, priests, and deacons, may the Lord continue to bless them in their ministry of heralding the birth of Jesus, the Son of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For legislatures and policy makers, May the Lord guide their decision-making in order to protect the lives of the unborn. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For an end to the COVID pandemic and for the safety of all health care workers and first responders, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For those who feel lonely this Christmas season, especially those who cannot be with loved ones this year, may Jesus bring them comfort. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families gathered today, as we seek to emulate the model of the Holy Family of Nazareth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the names of those written in our register for the sick, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For your own private intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you showed your love for us by sending your Son. We trust in that love as we present to you these needs of your people through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The offertory hymn is Away in a Manger. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May, May the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. Amen. As we look forward, O Lord, to the coming festivities, may we serve you all the more eagerly, for knowing that in them you make manifest the beginnings of our redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on a night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, may and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Benedict our, Francis, our Pope, 
and mark our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, and your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 Jesus taught us that we have a God who is our Father who loves us so very much. As his blessed children, how honored we are to now pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Spirit. This is Jesus, who has come from the Father to show us the Father's love. Blessed are those who approach him with empty hands and an open heart, and now will share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raises, let all within us praise his holy name. Christ is the Lord, oh praise his name forever. Silent Night. Oh, 
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may draw new vigor from celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, by whose heavenly mystery we receive both food and drink, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Before we depart, in the name of Father Jonathan, Deacon Dave, and myself, we truly wish all of you here in the church and those watching us on YouTube or streaming live, a truly blessed Christmas. I pray that the simple message that I tried to impart of God's great love for you truly rings down deep within your lives and your hearts and your souls. We are precious to our Lord. He came specifically to tell us that. So indeed, have a blessed Christmas. Enjoy your family, your friends, and then have a, a truly a, an experience of God's love. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord by loving and serving each other. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. As Father recesses to greet us as we leave, our closing hymn will be Hark the Herald, Angels Sing. Glory to the new